<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our Veterans Day Assembly. My name is Avi Chai Pepper and I run student activities. And we are here today in honor of the veterans of the United States of America who have served to protect and to guard our freedom for many, many years. Please rise in honor for our color guard. Color guard attention. Will the audience please rise? Hand salute. Color guard advance. Post the colors. Everyone, please join two. Color guard dismissed. You probably know that every year on November 11th, Americans celebrate Veterans Day to honor the millions of men and women who have served or are serving in the nation's armed forces. But bet you didn't know the whole story behind the holiday. For starters, it wasn't originally called Veterans Day, but Armistice Day to commemorate the truce signed between the Allies and Germany in World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The first Armistice Day in the U.S. was celebrated on November 11, 1919. All business was suspended for two minutes starting at 11 a.m., and parades and public gatherings were held to commemorate the occasion. Later, America also began honoring its unknown soldiers on Armistice Day, a tradition that continues today. At 11 a.m. every Veterans Day, a color guard ceremony represents all branches of the military at the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. In 1954, the name was changed to Veterans Day, following a national campaign to have the day honor all veterans, not just those who served in World War I. And did you know, for seven years, Veterans Day was actually celebrated in October? In 1968, Congress moved Veterans Day to the fourth Monday in October, so that government employees could enjoy a long weekend. But in 1975, President Gerald Ford returned Veterans Day to November 11th due to the historical significance. And that's where it sits on the calendar today. And do you know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day? Both of them honor those men and women who have served in the military, but Memorial Day honors America's war dead, while Veterans Day honors all American veterans, living and dead. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that there are currently over 21 million living military veterans in the United States. More than 16 million of these served during times of war, while 5.5 million served during peacetime only. So this Veterans Day, don't forget to say thanks to some of the millions of men and women who have served our country. Good morning, Boker Tov. Uh, we are so excited that you are all here to join us today for our Veterans Day Hakarat Hatov Gratitude Assembly. I want to take a special moment to welcome Mrs. Susan Koss and Rabbi Saul Koss back to the auditorium. Veteran um, Veterans Day Assembly was originally her idea, and I also want to call attention to the fact that this year, Mrs. Koss wore her sweater. <laughs> Last year I commented that I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen if she didn't, so. All right. We also want to mention that Mrs. Jaddick has joined us for this assembly. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Jaddick. Um, at this time, I tried to find him ahead of time, I'd like to call up Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Davidson, who has a special gift for the lower school. Good morning. Well, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Davidson. I'm the father of Jonathan and Jake. And last... <laughs> 
And last winter I was deployed. I went to Kuwait and Iraq in support of something called Operation Inherent Resolve, which is an operation that involves the intervention of the United States against ISIS. And while I was there, I spent some time in Kuwait at a very large post called Camp Arifjan. Thousands and thousands of soldiers from this country and many others serve at that post. And that was sort of a gateway for me to go subsequently to Iraq. But while I was at Camp Arifjan, uh, I had this flag raised above the hospital in Camp Arifjan in honor of Berman Hebrew Academy. And at this time, I'd like to present this flag uh, to the school and read the certificate that comes along with it. So it says, presented to Melvin J. Berman Hebrew Academy to certify that this American flag was flown at the United States Military Hospital on Camp Arifjan, Kuwait, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and the Global War on Terrorism on behalf of the United States of America. This symbolized the sovereign power of the United States of America, a symbol of freedom, justice, and memoriam of those who have died for it. Thank you. It's actually much heavier than you would think. Um, I want to thank uh, Jake and Jonathan's father and Lieutenant Colonel Davidson. We can also call you Dr. Davidson, I believe. Um, and thank you as a veteran and for having your, student, your children here at Berman Hebrew Academy. Thank you so much for thank the gift. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Please face the American flag. seated.
you so much, Kita Aleph. Gabby Sloan, who are going to share with us a short brief Dvar Torah on the topic of Hoda'ah. Good morning and welcome. The fourth grade and fifth graders are about to sing songs of Hoda'ah. Thanks. Chazal, our sages, teach us. Lo haya adam shehoda la kadosh parachu ad shevaat leya vehodato hapaam ode et hashem. No person thanked God until Leah came and thanked him and said, This time I am thankful to God after the birth of her fourth son Yehuda. Is it really possible that no one thanked Hashem until this time? Are we to believe that Avraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka never thanked Hashem? Of course they must have thanked Hashem. Leah realized the need to verbally pronounce and proclaim her thanks before others. She also realized that we need to display this thanks even for things that we consider part of natural life, things that are regular occurrences. We live in a country that provides us with freedoms that we enjoy every day. 
it can be easy to get used to them and take them for granted. Like Leia, we need to stop and pronounce our appreciation for these gifts. For we must thank Hashem for seeing to it that we have clothes to wear and food to eat and wonderful parents and so many blessings. We must also thank those who enable us and have enabled us to have these gifts. Thank you to our veterans for putting yourself on the line so that we can live in this wonderful country. We are grateful to you for protecting our rights and to serve Hashem openly to learn Torah and to pray. Tadaraba. Thank you.
Mr. Uli Kapilovsky, Rob Hakihila, to share with us a tefillah for our armed forces and the United States government. Friends, we're truly blessed to live in a country that espouses our religious freedoms, which we can celebrate in such a beautiful way today. It's an honor to be up on this stage where so many of our children have done such a beautiful job this morning. Let's give them a round of applause again. Kids, I guessed wrong today. I figured going with the blue jacket and the subtle red striped shirt was a good move, but the red sweater is clearly winning the day. So it's a beautiful room. Let's join together, if I could ask you to rise, for two tefillot, one for our country and one for our veterans. You're welcome to join with me. Next time they will increase the font size on the overhead. Avinu Shabbat Shamayim. Azor varech et artzino arzot abrit va America. Sim ahava veachva ben kol toshvea. Beten chachma lemanigia liotzea lekayem shalom aaretz vecherutea. Our Father in heaven, sustain and bless our land in which we live, the United States of America. Inspire love and brotherhood among its citizens, and grant wisdom to its leaders and counselors in order that they may be able to establish peace in the land and liberty for all. I selected these two tefillot from a variety of different tefillot that are written just to be able to express a few things that I think are not always said in each of them. Let's join together for the prayer for all of our veterans as we have in mind those that have served, but specifically in this tefillah, a prayer for those that are serving. Avinu Shabashamayim, Azor Varech et Chayalei Tzva Arzot Abrit, Amitse Koach. Gam Shmor Kol Nitzige Arzot Abrit Baulam. Am Kharfim Nafsham, Laganat Shalom Macho Ko Briotecha. Again Aleham, Bayabasha, Bavir, Uvayam. Bishalom Tolichem, Lishalom Tatidem. Ulechek mishpechotehem, chayim ushlemim bimhera teshivem. Hanchilenu shalom emet lekayem ashnamar, lo yisa goy al goy charev, velo yomedu od milchama. Chen yiratzon, vinomar amen. Let's join together in English. Our Father in heaven, sustain and bless the courageous servicemen and servicewomen of the American military forces including those serving in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air, Air Force, and Coast Guard, as well as American diplomats serving abroad, who risk their lives to protect the welfare of all your creation. Protect them on land, in the air, and in the sea. Guide them in peace. Lead them toward peace. And return them safely and speedily to their families. Grant us true peace in fulfillment of the prophecy. Nation shall not lift up sword against another nation, nor shall they learn any more war. May this be your will, and let us say, Amen. Let's join together in that final line, if you know the song. Lo yisa goy el goy Lo yilmedu oid milchama Lo yisa goy el goy Thank you, Mrs. Graver.
If I could ask along the theme of Hoda, could all of our veterans please stand so we could acknowledge you and give you a round of applause. Any veteran of any war in any country, please rise. Thank you so much. It was such an honor that you joined us today. Before we conclude, I'd like to take I'd like to take a moment to thank Mrs. Graber for all the hard work and effort that goes into this beautiful production, to Shani and Shiraz for all their help, to Mara Tara, Mrs. Trencher, Mara Viva, Mara Khanna, Mara Ashrat, and all the rest of the teachers who helped with this wonderful and honorable presentation. Menachem Abrams, please join me on stage. Please rise for the playing of taps. American flag. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in one final song together of God Bless America. And please remain seated at the end of the song and we will dismiss the students. That I, God bless America.